Hello, Calculus Scholars. Uh, welcome to Skill 39. which is average value. Uh, so basically, uh, we're going to be kind of looking today at an application of definite integrals. Um, and the main formula that we're going to have today is the average value formula. which essentially takes a definite integral from a to b of a function and then multiplies it by one over b minus a. Um, so where this kind of comes from, you know, you could think of like average in like grade school as, you know, kind of a sum of all your observations uh, divided by n. So like it's like 1 over n times, you know, the sum of observations. So maybe an observation is like a test score or something like that. And the average value formula that we're going to see in our um, calculus course is in essence of uh, integral is kind of like a sum of like all your rectangles and then you're just dividing it by the width of your interval so that's what is going on so if we have this formula down we can actually get most of the uh, questions of this scale so let's actually take a look at a few delta math examples all right, our very first example here, uh, example one, is find the average value graphically given areas. So we're going to say that this is example one. Uh, so we have regions A, B, C, and D are in the figure below. Region A is 19. Region B is 13. Uh, but of course, since it's below, I'm going to call that negative 13. Uh, the region of C is 9, and the region of D is negative 8. What is the average value of the function from negative 8 to positive 8? So we're looking at the average value of the function from like my starting and my ending point. So fortunately, we have a formula for average value, and that is going to be one over b minus a over the integral of a to b of f of x dx. And in the context of this problem, our uh, b equals eight, and our a equals to negative 8. So it's going to be 1 over 8 minus negative 8. And uh, we will multiply by the integral of negative 8 to 8 of f of x dx. And now we're just going to actually compute the area of that. Just kind of like add them up. The fraction becomes, you know, 1 over 16. And then we're just going to add. So I got 19 minus 13 plus 9. And then I have a uh, minus 8. Uh, so I'm taking into account, you know, those positive negative areas. And I'm going to see, you know, what kind of wins out here. Um, this one, it looks like maybe there's slightly more above the x-axis than below the x-axis. So let me just get my calculator here and see what we are up against. So I got, uh, at the end of this, I got 1 16th times 7. 
for a grand total of 7 sixteenths. So that's a little bit more than a half. So that kind of makes sense because if we kind of, or actually a little bit less than a half, but about a half, I would say, give or take. So actually this is about a half. And it turns out that if I just kind of like drew that, uh, we would actually see that about half of the time we're above that and then half of the time we are below that. So that's why it's called the average value. And I'll just put the seven over 16 in. And you can actually kind of see the signed areas as well. Let's just do one more. Uh, so we'll call this example two. And then we'll go to a new type of question that is without the graphs. All right, so for this one, we are going from, uh, we got A, B, C, and D. The function is bounded, of course. Uh, our region A is eight. And since that is uh, below, that's gonna be a negative eight. Our B is a plus three. Our C is a minus 15. And then our D is a positive 15. And we have to actually find the average value in the interval negative four to two. I even like to kind of call this my A and my B, and that gives us what we need. So this is gonna be one over two minus negative four times the integral of negative four to two of f of x. And I'm just gonna go from negative four, so I'm just gonna highlight my graph, and I'm gonna go all the way to two, so I'm just looking at b and c. So you could even, if you wanted to, like when you're showing your work, you could even just say what areas you added up, so then you're gonna get one sixth times three minus 15. So I got one sixth times negative 12. And negative 12 divided by six is just gonna be negative two. So that makes about sense. So you'll have um, a few of these uh, graphical average values just to kind of warm you up. All right, uh, let's take a look at an average value without the graph. So we're gonna do an example without the graph here. So this is example three. So this says, let f be the function defined by f of x equals to negative three x squared minus five. Uh, so of course our average value formula is the same. So that's gonna be one over B minus A of the integral A to B of F of X DX. And we're even just going to put in our B and our A. And then our integral is going to be from negative one to two of negative three x squared minus five dx. So this is going to give us one third. And uh, when I take the antiderivative, I'm just going to use my reverse power rule. So that's gonna get me to x cubed. That's gonna be a negative one. So I just call that a negative x cubed minus five x. I like to include the plus C because that's technically grammatically correct. Uh, but you can see that those plus C's most likely cancel out. 
And then uh, we are at the whims of the calculators at this point. So I'm just going to kind of do the negative two plug-in first, or the two plug-in. So I'm going to plug that two in. So that's our plug-in with two. And then we're just going to subtract our plug-in with negative one. And then uh, we are just going to go to our calculator. I just kind of suggest uh, once when you get the antiderivative that you just go ahead and even get the delta math calculator out. Um, so if I have a negative three, and uh, I'm starting with a two. Oh wait, I've got negative. Uh, so I've got the antiderivative, so I'm gonna do a negative, and I'm gonna cubed that two, minus five times two. That could get me a minus 18. So I got a minus 18 plus C. And then I have, and you kind of got to be really careful with these uh, negative signs and uh, all these distributions. So I just kind of even like to take them one group at a time. So then I would just put in the negative one. Now I like to kind of keep a parentheses there as well. Um, and then we would be at a negative, uh, or let's see, we got a, a six. So I'm just going to put in a six plus C. So I got one third times negative, and if C's cancel out, so I got a one third times negative 18 minus six, which is one third times negative 24, and that's gonna get us to negative eight. Um, another thing that you could do is uh, you could actually just do the definite integral uh, like you did um, before on the last scale, and then you could just multiply by whatever your 1 over B minus A is. Uh, just be aware that the most common reason why people get this type of problem correct or incorrect is just keeping track of the parentheses and the signs. And if you're able to do that, you'll be in pretty good shape with this scale.